Morning at NTV. Indeed, it's still very, very exciting to still be on your screen this early morning, wherever you're watching from. I really want to thank those on Twitter and Facebook and YouTube commenting and giving your feedback. But I want to request that um, you, you don't use quite very heavy language, especially when you disagree with some people's opinions while they're here, because uh, at times it can be quite tough. Now, this is the second wave of the lockdown that saw the Chikubo, the heartbeat of business in Kampala. It's a flea market where quite most people find their suppliers, distributors and all that. It was closed. Now, the closing of Chikubo means that most businesses that feed off it in the rest of the country are equally closed. Now, to speak to us to understand the economic um, challenges and effects of this and more we have mr francis muhiri an economist from moobs good morning francis good morning how Andrew. are you holding up <clears throat> ah this is it you know these are tough times yes and indeed. of course with the second wave you know it's it's more serious more it's more deadly than the first one yes yeah but uh, from the economic perspective just as we put it we've uh -huh. seen you know uh the business center you're talking about downtown yes Chicago being closed yes and uh, that is actually one of the mistakes that has been done because when you talk of downtown Ochiku, this yes. is the hub center that yes. supplies to other units, whether in the peripherals of Kampala mm. or even outside Kampala. Mm. You talk <coughs> about you know supermarkets, even these other retailers, mm. you know coming to do you know shopping from downtown. Mm. And um, we saw the same thing happening last time. Mm. You know, when you close Chikubo, mm -hmm. all the supply center for most of these essential durable goods mm. then you're going to have a problem with you know supply shortages mm. and that's why the prices have shoot up of most of those you know essential non-durable goods you're talking about cooking oil oh, yes. talking about salt mm, sugar uh, is actually yeah the prices on. is you know mm. is skyrocketing why because the supply uh -huh. has been disrupted and also not forgetting about the not also forgetting about the we have market speculators mm. you have those sharp people who saw mm. what happened last time they knew and that they even made the projections. Yes, they knew that. They, I think maybe they know that this government is weak. They keep on doing the same. What do you mean the government is ah, weak? Let me, let me explain to you for you that. Uh -huh. Because as I'm telling you, we've learned to learn from experiences. Uh -huh. This same thing happened last time. Yes. So you have speculators who know that the government is going to do the same mistake, just shut down, you know, Chikubo, and there's going to be a shortage in supply. So they stock. They stock and hold. Uh -huh. And that's also another reason why the prices have shot up. You know, you're speaking from the point of view, like we're dealing with the normancy. So from your school of thought, yeah. do you think Chikubo should have stayed open, maybe with the SOPs being adhered to by far? Not entirely open, but you need to leave some of those units, especially those which are dealing... We are talking about essential goods. Essential goods, You're yes. talking about things like salt, soap, these are essential goods. Yes, the you plastic ones can close. The plastic <laughs> ones, those are into textile, fashion, yes. clothes. Those mm. ones, we don't need them right mm. now. But these other essential durable goods, you need to leave them open and mm. also leave the, those who are dealing into wholesale, not mm. retail, so that you can easily control the flow of people. With wholesale, it is easy to control the number of people. Mm. So not like shutting it completely. So if you're, if you're the chairperson, if you're in this kind of chair, yeah. um, like you're on the committee that made the decision that uh, Chikubo should be closed, what would you advise the COVID-19 task force to do to fight the pandemic and keep the economy afloat? Like, we're still going, we're cruising, maybe we're going by 60 kilometers per hour, but now we're at 30, but we're still thriving business-wise. Just as I've said, um, one thing you have to know that COVID is going to be here. It's certain it's going to be here, actually, mm. for a long time. Mm. You have to put that in mind so that when you're planning, mm -hmm. don't plan as if this, is, this you know, COVID-19 is going away, like in one year or two years. We mm. still have COVID here. Mm -hmm. So you have to make long-term plans. That's what you have to consider that. But before I go further with that... Wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, so, Francis, you mean these are knee-jerk reactions we're doing as, as a country, as a government? We don't have long-term plans... These are just reactionary? With the way I'm um, seeing things being done since mm -hmm. this outbreak of COVID-19, mm. I don't see any action to do with long-term future plans. And I'm going to explain that later. Mm. But before I jump into that, I also wanted to make this point that however much there is, you know, uh, you know an increase in the price of most of these, you know, essential goods, mm. don't forget that they also those goods whose prices have reduced you mm -hmm. know, uh, very greatly. And here we are talking about perishable agricultural products. Yes, they we're are. We're talking about Matoki. We're talking A about... A batch of Matoki is 6K now. Exactly. Yeah. So the prices have reduced by over 50%. Mm. Who is suffering? Who is going to meet this you know, loss? Mm. The farmer. Yes. And we saw the same thing happening last time. What mm. did the government do? What did the government do? Mm. 
nothing about it. The same thing is happening. Not forgetting that, you know, when you talk of the agricultural sector, it is very sensitive. Mm. If you but don't it's not given the due attention. Exactly. If mm. you don't support <coughs> these people mm. in these mo hard moments where they need the government the most, mm. if the government doesn't come up with a mechanism mm. to make sure they compensate for these farmers' losses, the next thing you're going to hear, they will be discouraged to mm. go back to the gardens. Mm -hmm. And what will happen in the long run? You're going to see food inflation. And remember, food is one of the three major drivers of inflation in this country. Sure. sure. You get. So mm. you may not feel the impact right now, but, but it's soon coming. you will feel it. It's coming. And that's why I normally tell people that the economic impact of COVID-19, mm. we haven't really started to we'll feel the impact. for 20 years. We are just going to start very soon because you've seen now inflation is starting to shoot. Yes. We might see a double-digit inflation. Oh. Yeah. Don't mention it. It, it really <laughs> worries me because I've ever been here when it's actually here. Earlier on, we alluded to what um, that there is no long term from from your, from your lenses. You don't see the government having you know critical long term lenses on how we are dealing with this. We are dealing with it like it's it's flu that's you know it will go one day, yet it's going to stay here. How best could we navigate it with long term strategies as an economist? First of all, Uganda as a country or the government mm. should pause, mm. critically analyze this whole situation, come up with a new cure, not just copying and pasting what other countries are doing. Mm. So what do I mean? That, for example, when you talk of long-term planning, mm -hmm. it all starts with resource allocation. Look at the budget, you know, the budget for this financial year. Mm -hmm. It tells you everything that there is no long-term that is looking at COVID. Mm. This budget wasn't looking at COVID. However, last time, of course, we saw supplements to do with, you know, um, the stimulus to mitigate the negative mm. impact. What did the money do? I want you to challenge you and find a out where the money A few people actually went. received that money. Well, mm. about 555 billion shillings were put in UDB mm. to, you know, to boost the economy by helping those hard hit SMEs. Mm. After getting the money, they said, this is not for the struggling SMEs. Mm. Talk about the Mioga, the biggest scam we've ever had. It came <laughs> in. <laughs> Why do you call it a yeah, scam? I'm, I'm to some people it has I'm, worked. I'm, Francis. I'm, I'm <laughs> going to explain to you this. <laughs> it came during a long timing. That was during politics. Yes. And it ended up being hijacked or used as you know, a campaign tool. Mm. Myself, I did some survey out mm. there. Sometimes the I go and I talk about you know, people uh -huh. who applied, what was required, you know, pay membership fee, mm. talking about border, border riders, salon, the saloon operators. Chaps, yes. mm. When after campaign, of course, some people received, but mm. how many? That's why you need to look at the results. Mm. Not few groups getting, but what does that number of groups that receive constitute the entire target? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm telling that <coughs> if you go out there, you will get shocked by the results. Sometimes I even see the government officials announcing some of these results, and I'm like, what is this? Be be because they know the truth. Yeah, but uh, before... <coughs> I, also, I want to continue to make that point about long-term plans. Mm. It all starts with resource allocation. When you look at the budget for this financial year, mm. and you see the way resources have been allocated, mm. we've done the same exact thing we've been doing since 1986. There is no contagious. Poor resource allocation, mm. high levels of fiscal indiscipline. Mm. This time, actually, what was done, I want you to look at this. Mm. They stopped allocating resources according to sectors. Why? And actually, the most sector they removed is mm. health and education, which was combined into human capital development. Mm, because true. this time they didn't want you, or to see. see that government and security has taken that biggest share, mm. that is over 15% uh, of the budget allocations, 34.5% mm. is going to debt repayment. Mm. And then you have 17% for human capital, ca uh, capital development coming mm. in the third mm. with 17. But that 17, 10 is going to education as usual, 7 is going to health. Mm. For God's sake, we're in a pandemic. The last <laughs> pandemic the world had was 98 years ago. Oh yes, I get your point now. So the long-term future plans we are talking about, you're not looking at sectors like health, yeah. Mm. You're not looking at sectors like education. Mm. Students are home. There is no plan. Mm. You're talking about online, uh, you know, online, you know, uh, learning. It it needs internet. Mm. However, government, however much the government has come up to say internet for education purposes is going to be cheap, or mm. the price is going to be cheap. But if you're starting <coughs> online, you're going to buy data from MTN. Will they know that you're a student? There, is, there, is, there has to be a mechanism that things are done right. But continue on that same other point, uh, the same point is also look at the tourism sector. Mm. The tourism sector is one of the leading 
foreign exchange earners of this country. They left them open? 2017, mm. it was actually the leading until gold came and took over. Mm. But we're talking about the sector that brings in over 1.5 trillion US dollars, mm. but has been left behind. Why the first, the first wave, mm -hmm. this was a battle. However much the president was saying this is a war. It was a war, yes. We're about to win the first battle with the first wave. And then that's why we lost it again at the end mm. of the first wave. We opened again the airports, mm. introduced more and new deadly variants. Mm. If you cannot quarantine someone who's coming from abroad at least for two weeks, because remember this COVID um, virus, it has a window period of at least two weeks. Mm. Someone might come, they test positive. If, if you let them to go into the country, mm. then after a few weeks, they are going to test positive and mm. they are spreading the disease. They have so contacted people. That's why today, the list of the countries that you know are coming up, banning mm. Ugandans from traveling to the country, the, the list keeps on you know incre uh, increasing. You've seen UK banning people from Uganda, mm. United Arab Emirates. They can bring in their people, but for us, we can't go there. Mm. Why? Because of mismanaging the whole situation. You, you, you've alluded that we don't have long-term plans, and a couple of people actually agree with you in line there. Let's talk about the sectors that will be worst hit in this second wave. What are some of the sectors, you know, that someone was saying that um, tourism is still open, but any time now, we are going process by process, they could actually also be closed in one mm -hmm. or the other. Mm -hmm. What are some of those sectors you feel are going to be worst hit? I like that line, uh, that line process by process. Is that's how we're going. <laughs> yes, <laughs> let me tell you. Um, but are we naive as Ugandans? <laughs> though? The government is naive. Ugandans, mm. we are not naive. The government mm -hmm. in charge is naive. So... The most hit sector is going actually to be tourism sector. Again. Again. Mm. Because remember, Uganda right now is up there all over the media. Mm. Talk about the biggest media houses. Everyone is talking mm. about how Uganda is being hit hard yes. by new dangerous you know, variants. Mm. Talk about the Delta, which is deadly. Mm. Who is willing to come to a country where they know that there is the most dangerous variant Delta. the Delta? No one is going to come. Very much so. so you won't be seeing those people coming. Mm. But those who have already come in, especially the business people mm. coming wherever they are coming from, the danger, the, <coughs> the cause that they have already, all that spark mm. is enough. And you're going to see, you know, we're going to see this happening. And, you know, tourists won't come in. They won't come in. Wow. Yeah. And how best are we going to navigate this? How can we go around it? Well, the, what the government can do maybe is not look at local tourism. Mm. You know, you have people who are home. Maybe you have those people. But you've told them not to move again. No, that's, <laughs> not, that's, also, that's also the other challenge. Poor planning. Yeah, poor planning. I mean, this is time to encourage local tourism. As mm. long as people follow SOPs. Oh, dear. Yeah. Mm. Yes, please. So, what do you think of the direct cash transfers from the PM? <laughs> Because previously, in the first wave, we had issues of corruption, a food didn't treat some people, masks. I personally didn't get my mask, and I still, we still have an issue to sort there with the government. I didn't you get my mask, I didn't mask. get my food. Omuntu uh, Awansi, who even has connection, I didn't get food. Now, do you think the transactions of cash in one way or the other, you know, it could listen on the corruption? First of all, it is very essential and the government should take this as a serious thing. Mm. When we talk of safety needs in these you know, hard times, people don't have food. So the government should go ahead and think mm. of a good mechanism how you know, they can provide these safety nets to these you know, vulnerable poor people. But the question is, what is your definition of vulnerable poor people? Definition, defining who is a vulnerable poor person is very important. Mm. When you go and out ask these people who are determining or who want to go and give out this you know, safety net package, mm. themselves, if they give that definition, they're going to realize that most of people are left out. True. That is one, that's one thing they need to answer to. I prefer cash than food. Why? Because last time, you know, they were giving lotten beans and posho. Mm. Even some people don't even like posho, yet the price of matoke was completely down. Mm. Give them money. Those who want to enjoy posho, they will buy posho. Then let's come to the mode of determining who is a vulnerable and the one who is not valuable. Yes. Mm. So you need to give them cash so that they can make a decision out mm. of what they want. Because we've seen, let's say, the prices for perishable agricultural products has gone down. Mm. So to support actually these already struggling suppliers of these mm. perishable agricultural products like Matoke, mm. give them money. A lot of people prefer Matoke to, to, to Posho. My only concern and one mm. is that you the saw... The determinant. The determinant <laughs> and even the distribution 
of the money. Of the money. That's the thing. We are talking about the money. Even if you say local leaders go and, and we need the money. I saw a friend of mine, Isma, going cuckoo's online. He's saying that you have to give me my money. <laughs> the hundred k. Every day, do you spend six thousand on your meals? Ah, uh, well, I think six thousand is average. Is average. Is average. For the technocrats Ghana. budgeted for us. They said if it's a home of four people and mm. you spend six thousand per day, you'll be in position to thrive through the forty-two days. That is a hundred thousand. Oh. Afterwards, I want you to go and check your calculator. <laughs> but the whole thing is, uh. the whole thing is, how are uh. they going to determine these vulnerable people? Mm. When they're talking of channels, let's say going to uh, mobile operators, mm. communication companies. Mm. I might have a SIM card which is dormant. I rarely use it for mobile money transactions. Mm. You know, and I'm um, one of the fishermen, the cabinet ministers. I will get the money. Mm. So I don't think that is a way of finding out these vulnerable poor people. Mm. They took records. Mm -hmm. They gave out food. Though of course, there are those who missed out because it wasn't effective. Even, you know, they were distributing this food using cars where the cars could not reach. I, I witnessed that. I used to fall up and see what is going mm. on. Where the cars don't reach, they are in suburbs. They will mm. not, they will just stop there and give those and they, just they, 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 they can't give. Yeah, so they really have to come up with a better mechanism. And the other thing is, today mm. we are 10 days into 42 days of lockdown. How are these people surviving? This okay. needs a rapid response. Okay. Um, just to clarify, um, the, the 6,000 figure came from the KCCA, and that would bring us to 250,000, uh, 252,000 Ugandan shillings. That's what I'm talking about, not 100,000. But the government said 100,000. Now, let's talk about the businesses. If someone is having a small business, he had personally started, you know, the small way, SME or something of the sort, would you advise them as an economist to get facility from the banks to thrive through this kind of pandemic? I wouldn't tell them to go to banks right now because remember the cost of capital in this country is already high. Mm. And we know one of the reasons is the government itself, which is the biggest borrower from the domestic market. True. And to make the matter as worse, we are looking at the government targeting to borrow 19.1% 19, 19 of the budget yes. from the domestic market, meaning that the price of, mm. m of capital is going, to, the cost of capital is going to shoot up. Again, so I wouldn't advise them to go right now. However, what can the government mm. do for these, you know, uh, actually not only SMEs, but even micro, you know, businesses, because Ugandans are heavily into actually micro uh, businesses. Mm. The government should target these people mm -hmm. with rapid response. For example, I really, I was hit hard by seeing how the government didn't solve these, uh, you know, serious issues. We're talking about, mm. you know, micro business, uh, small business, the people who are into retail, who are into wholesale. Someone rented out, you know, in Kampala or downtown. Mm. You know, they were home for four months. Mm. They come back, they have to pay rent. Mm. They have not been working. And the government is not helping these people. And yet, these are the taxpayers. Mm. The biggest the block. Yes. Mm. And afterwards, we introduce new taxes. You've not helped these people to clear their rent or to solve the issue between tenants and mm. landlords. And instead, you've brought in you know, new taxes. So it's very worrying that the government tend not to look at real, real serious issues. When you talk about of your economy, you're talking about this point to micro and small enterprises. Mm -hmm. When you talk of medium enterprises, those ones actually heavily, heavily dominated by foreign direct investors. Mm. But a common Ugandan, mm. a real Ugandan, residents are into micro and small enterprises. The government should that's have why the government that. should be targeting. <coughs> so um, th th there has been today. I don't know. Uh, you read the Daily Monitor today. It said that uh, um, Dana Twine, who happens to be the PS to the Minister of Health, says. The reason why there is a mismanagement of the COVID from the health perspective. They should have had uh, 42,000 beds and ICU and all that. The procurement laws. She comes from the school of thought that some laws should be, you know, incend in these times. And then we deal with the emergency. What's your thought on that? That's all about the planning I was talking about. And, you know, saying the procurement issues, all that. So you think the Minister of Disaster Preparedness all doesn't have contingency plans at all? All that is, that is an Planning. excuse. That is an excuse. Maybe we have good planners, but maybe we have a problem from the political Wing. side. Okay, to implement. But that is another topic for another day. Mm. For me, I'm not buying that, that the issues is to do with procurement. Mm. It is to do with the priorities. Rearrange your okay. priorities. Mm -hmm. 
Andrew will tell that when we look at the budget allocations, 46% of the budget is going to salaries and non-salaries mm. because you have this huge, bloated, big, big government. Mm. You know, mm. when you look at the pyramid, only 5.5 mm. trillion is going to salaries, salaries but 15.6 trillion is going into non-salaries. Mm. These are allowances in terms of vehicles. Mm. And the <coughs> biggest part of all this is going to the small part of the pyramid. So you have, you have this small section of few Ugandans at mm. the top of the pyramid, the executives, the mm. fishermen, mm. the 529 MPs, mm. and the rest are struggling from down. Mm. Until we allocate resources, reduce the size of this expensive government, mm. you don't need a big <coughs> government. Mm. This is a country of... Service delivery, decentralization, that's the, what they're saying they're doing. A, that's what they're saying, but this is not the case. There is a negative relationship between the size of the government and service delivery. The bigger the size of the government, because mm. it comes with a high cost, mm. I'm telling you we are spending 21 trillion on yes. salaries and answers for mm. this huge government. Mm. Take an example of other countries like South Korea. Mm. They only have 18 ministers. And it's thriving. They, they only have 300 member of parliament in the mm. National Assembly. Mm. And this is a 1.6 trillion economy. Nin Thriving in Soviet. 1962, we are almost at the same level. Uganda mm. was at the same level with South Korea. Here we are. The challenge is that we are off track, uh -huh. though the government <coughs> is trying to show that we are on track by giving us hopes. Mm. Let me tell you one thing this government has mastered mm. is to give people hopes. That's why they bring government projects and programs mm. with very nice names, nice themes, they fail, no results, come up with it, they just change the English They rebrand. Exactly. Do you think the issue should be about implementation or the actors that need to be changed in one way? The whole other? structure is rotten. Okay. That's the fact. Well, that is a Francis, uh, a, a, a very great economist there coming in from MOOBS there. It's, it's, it's very interesting. We should have these conversations more. Those who are getting uh, 6,000, rather 100K, if you've received uh, the right honorable... Um, Nabanje's message, you have to spend 2,300 per day. You don't need to waste that money. 2,300 per day. What can it buy, though? <laughs> if you're in the Kampala, you will buy each commando. There you have it. That's <laughs> it. My colleague, Stephen Mbide, is at Chitebi Health Center. Today, we are having other, another lot of the second jobs. If you're one of those, remember we told you that in Wakiso and, uh, and those in the Metropolitan, the different divisions, the jobs are actually on today. Go get your second job of the vaccination. Mbide, what is the picture like at Chitebi where you are? What is the vibe from the locals? And do they have some worries? If they do, what are the worries? <laughs> if I update you there, send to our Let me tell you that uh, that 2,000 shillings, we, you can be able uh, to buy a kilo of akawunga. Kubanga for one two one si, tera nyokwe tanira akawunga. So I'm still also waiting for that mobile money message from uh, WHT Wanabanya. But here at Chitebi Health Centre 4, it's a KCCA health facility. You can see the health officials from KCCA at that side already setting up uh, to be able to administer uh, the vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, that is either, I don't know whether it's actually AstraZeneca or it's also from any other company that they will be administering to some of the people already here. They came as early as 6.30. Some of them, they've been here waiting for the vaccine and then uh, they are ready to take, some of them are going to take the second jab and others are coming in just for the first time. But let me speak to them. They will be letting me know, of course, this fight against COVID-19. Bo Baraba, even if you have to uh, Baku te kuwe limu kulio, elio kubanga bege mesa, obradi unwa COVID-19. Na ebo, amanyi bagalaba wa, obuna fubo, basinga bula bawa, echi, kita kubanga chikole wa, kula banga, da, da, tulua nisa, obradi unwa wa uh, COVID-19. Nyabo wa sotia. Burunji sebo, mm. wasiwata msa. Burunji nyabo, nyabo amanyi ago. Ze eta nasali, seka banga. Mm. Nyabo kati kwa tayo obradi unwa, okulua nisa, na amanyi, na wichimu, gulaba amanyi, no obuna fubili ruda, wa chichi, 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 Government Na 
na ye singa staff sabadde na whatsapp group kwe na labye advert nkine rechi te bibajja gem sandi tegedde rondo zola ba bantu sibe banje nyo kuba kati abantu bamanya batia te muri bizinda ale bya isemu nti waliyo kugema kugaba kumanyisa bantu kyabula mu nenga abantu bali willing abantu bali willing e na ye kakati ne tujja kudozi ya kubi e ya soka na twajifunira na mirembe okudda yo kuluna kunti te wali dagala eddagala tunonya linonyi Okay. Eh government okay. yogere mu amanyi mm. abantu bali willing okwegema ero tulaba engalo tunaba mask twambala mm. eh yeah. mama ah uh, kambuze ku sebo ah uh, mukuru mm. na uh, maybe let me begin with you sebo good morning to you me sebo uri utia ndiburungi mm. manya gosebo mm. abe mwes mm ah mm. uh, gwe kwatu yemi chikira botia wazi wono sawa mbe no tsa wono sawa 10 na 2 mm. eh nedda chigezi gwamu kati enkwata yobula de bono bichiro buna fubuli wana amani gali ludda wana obuna fubuli ku government mm. oyinzo obutakiraba nenga government eyino obuna fubwayo mm. bukyange subiza bantu masiki mm. izili ludda wo mm. isa government mm. toke gamba bantu mugende baba koleke baba gemme mm. mugende mwe 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 kume muri ne masiki zili zili ludda bwana sente za fulu mu bumbi bwa sente buli ludda wo ekino kitureta go chimanyi Era bana abasawu abantu abavunanjibwa ku byedagara edagara zira bika bogere mitwaro simanyi 10 million 18 zaragawa ziriruddo era kati olwale mitwaro jiri 10 na musambu 10 na musambu jikole kwani kati wanu wolye rubaga tuli emitwaro emekeje abantu tusuka ne mwabiri yabye subize bitukiriza ina teje na bitukiriza nze muri bwendo wose tuge egeza ko bugeza obubi bususe Wewe bali nyo. Ah, uh, chiroso chimamo gadoga mbotia. Okay, thank you so much for your view and let me speak to you and he will be the last person I'll be speaking to this morning about the fight against COVID-19. Good morning mm. to you sir. Morning. Mm. Your name? Kikazulu. Mm. Yeah. How you, how are you looking at the fight against COVID-19? Where is the weakness where the efforts that need be at least, at least strengthened? You know, one thing is that uh, it's not the government really that can prevent this disease its individuals the government has done its work they have told us what to do but compliance is a big big problem now the government's biggest role should be to provide vaccines and the message should go out there clear actually my disappointment is that uh, the first batch of vaccines the government didn't come out to encourage people take these vaccines they left social media to take the show and not the government which should have been should have used all means including social media to make sure they encourage people to take this vaccine but otherwise i think the fight is for the people the government has guided us but we need to play our role otherwise there is no the government cannot come and if there is war going on and you hear bullets and you don't run away you so can't blame <laughs> the government we hmm? also have to do our part we have to do our part thank you so much so uh, these are some of the people who came he in here at the chitebi hill center for the kcc's facility just to take many of them to take a second job this is morning at ntv thank you for being a part of us oh, that is the ntv family from 6 30 andrew chamagero saint every woman to our one was with you until the time um, Bido, Bido Steven and Professor Chuga also uh, joined you. This is Morning at NTV at 9 a.m. We'll be Faida Nakazo with Mats Keep it here on NTV. See you tomorrow.